Hey everyone, it's Sarah from Rhythm School with a tutorial today about arrow functions. So the first thing to understand about arrow functions is that they're not supposed to be a complete replacement for regular functions. They do have some side effects that you want to be aware of, but today I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm just gonna show you the syntax for writing an arrow function and some other video will talk about when and why to use them. So for right now, um, let's talk about classic functions um, in JavaScript. So this is, you know, a, a function that we all know and love. We'll just start with an easy add function. Uh, so we're going to take two parameters, A and B, and we're going to do our curly braces and return A plus B. So, you know, this is kind of a classic first function that you, you might write for yourself. So we're going to come over. We're going to just check that it works. So we're going to go add and do three and four and hopefully we get seven and we do, so life is good. Okay, so what do we do in order to make this into an arrow function? Well, the first thing to understand is that arrow functions are always anonymous functions. So an anonymous function is a function that doesn't have a name. So like our function here, we named it add. An anonymous function would be just like that function, but instead of having the word add in there, I'm just not going to name it. I'm going to have a b to my curly brace. We're going to return a plus b. Um, and uh, well, you know, that's all well and good, except that there's no way to use this function, right? So I have it returning a plus b. It's taking an a plus b, but how do we call this? We can't call this because it doesn't have a name. It's anonymous. So an anon anonymous function can be used by giving it uh, assigning it to a variable. So I'm going to say const um, add an anonymous <laughs> equals. And now we equal our function. And now we can return our a and b. So if I head over here to the console, if I try to call add anonymous with three and four, you'll see we still end up with seven. OK, so that's how we can use an anonymous function is by assigning it to a variable. So in order to take one step closer to making this an arrow function, um, it's actually pretty easy. All we're going to do is uh, we're going to call this, let's uh, call this one add anonymous, <laughs> you should have picked an easier word to spell, <laughs> anonymous arrow. So this one's going to be our arrow function. So for this, all we're going to do is we're going to take that word function and we're going to leave it out. So we're going to say this is now equal to whatever parameters we want. And I kind of imagine that we're taking that word function and we're turning it into an arrow and we're just swapping it. We're putting it on the other side of our parameters. So now we've got our arrow, we're gonna do our curly braces and the rest of this is exactly what we did before. Okay, so now if I come over here and I try add anonymous arrow and I pass in a three and a four, we get seven again. So we've got three different ways so far to write our functions. So we have a classic function, we have an anonymous function, and now we have an arrow function. So we're getting closer to writing arrow functions the way that you might have seen them written in code. Um, it's pretty rare to see this particular format um, because it is pretty wordy. And, and one of the benefits of arrow functions is that they can be less long. So let's fix that. So we're gonna make this into a one line arrow function. And the reason why we can make this into a one line arrow function is because we only have one thing inside of our curly braces. So this means that we can condense this onto one line. And when we do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop this return and we can also get rid of our curly braces and write the whole thing on one line. So now I'm gonna call this um, add, but it's this, straight up arrow function now it's a one liner so i'm going to say it equals two so now my function starts with the parameters and it's going to return those parameters added together and that's it it's so short it's so little it's so elegant that's an arrow function so if i come over here to my console and i do add arrow oops add arrow and i do three and four we get seven so this is how we've gotten from classic function to an anonymous function 
to a really long looking <laughs> arrow function to now the short version of an arrow function that you might have seen in different places. Now, we can make this even shorter. So a lot of times we'll have a function that only takes in one parameter. So if I have a function that only takes in one parameter, say I want to just take something in and then return whatever that thing is squared. So I'm going to make another anonymous arrow function and we'll call this one square. And the way that we've been writing it to now, I could take in a parameter. I'm just going to call it C because we've used A and B. So I'm just going to call it C. Um, and then we would return um, our parameter and we're going to just raise it to the second power. We're going to square it. So if I come over here to my console and I run square and um, yeah, let's do three. And I get nine because three times three is nine. So I can make this even shorter <laughs> if I only have one parameter. So I'm going to call this one square, I don't know, square shorter, <laughs> which is actually longer, which is kind of ironic. Um, anyway, so I'm just going to leave out my parentheses now. And I'm just going to go C. So if I come over here and I do square shorter <laughs> and I do three, it still works. I still get nine. So this entire function is from the C <laughs> to there, this whole thing. It's just that long. It's crazy. All of this is just what we're calling it so we can use it. Oops, I didn't need to do that. Um, and this is the function. That's it. That's the entire function. So we've, we've stripped this down to just being, what are we taking in and what are we putting out? And that's the beauty of an arrow function is it really just gets down to exactly what you need and takes away a lot of the other syntax. So I hope that was a helpful intro to how arrow functions work and how to get from a classic function down to an arrow function. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comments. I'll be more than happy to answer them. Or if you have a request for another video, I'd be happy to do that too. Um, if you want to know more about arrow functions, you can head over to our free curriculum at rhythmschool.com and check out our exercises and lessons there on it. And uh, hope you have a great day. See you next time.